Hey folks, it's your pal Mike Shea from SlyFlourish.com and Twitter.com slash SlyFlourish here with another episode of Sly Flourish's Lazy DM Prep. Sly Flourish's Lazy DM Prep is a weekly show shot 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Times on Sunday in which I go through steps from Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master while preparing for my D&D game. Uh, right now, that is an Eberron game. We're going to be talking a lot about Eberron today. Uh, this show, like all of the Sly Flourish Empire, is brought to you by the patrons of Sly Flourish at patreon.com slash slyflourish. If you would like to help support the show, you can do so by going over to patreon.com slash slyflourish and signing up to become a patron. You get uh, access to an exclusive newsletter every month, as well as access to a few other products and books and little things like a, a, an adventure called Regnum Rattus, the rats in the cellar is exclusive for patron backers. And you get access to all of my uh, notebooks, my notion uh, campaign notebooks and other little things, access to a discord server, all kinds of things. So if you want to support the show, that's a good way to do it. Hey, my mom is here. My mom's up in a cabin somewhere. I didn't know she'd be able to, to access it. That's great. So today is a special episode. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to pull this off. And the answer is probably not well, uh, but I would like to do two things. Uh, the most important of which is talking about the book Exploring Eberron. Exploring Eberron is a book that is soon to come out on the DMs Guild. This is a book that Keith Baker, the creator of Eberron, has been working on for quite some time. This is something that he's been working on, I believe, since uh, they were originally doing the uh, Eberron Rising, Rise of the Last War uh, book. And this is, it's, I'm going to call it kind of like a director's cut. Right. This is sort of the things that they that Keith knew they weren't going to be able to fit in the main book. And it was put into a um, another book. So uh, this book will be this is something that the DMs Guild has made possible. So before uh, there's lots, if you think about it, like Wizards of the Coast owns the IP to Eberron. So uh, they and they only want to put out books that they know are going to be uh, big big commercial successes, right? Great big things, which means they're not willing to experiment quite as much with uh, secondary products. But that means that whenever they put out a new version of Eberron, they write a single core book, uh, like the Eberron Rising of the Last War book, which I've got right here. And, you know, they can only make it so big, which means there's a lot of material about Eberron that doesn't really get published. And it's not the kind of thing that even Keith uh, could put out on the open internet, right? I mean, you could put it out like on wikis and stuff like that but not, not as a product. So the DMs Guild allows Keith himself uh, and Wang, Wayne Chang, who uh, I think is work, who worked with Keith on this, uh, to put together a big book that they can sell on the DMs Guild and make money on uh, and use the IP that is owned by Wizards of the Coast because it's on the DMs Guild. So this has made this book possible. So exploring Eberron, like I said, I, don't, I think it's certainly coming out this month. I think that it, uh, I believe that, that Wayne and Keith have sent it to the DMs Guild and it's going through their process to get up and online. It's going to be a print book too, which means it goes through another process. Uh, but boy, it looks awesome. So I got, uh, I asked Keith, I actually sent, I kind of begged Keith. I sent him a note and I said, hey, Keith, I run a Twitch show and I'm running an Eberron game and I don't know anything about the Dakani and or or the drawam and i'd sure love to know more about the dakani and the drawam and i know you're making a book how about uh if would you be willing to preview the book i will buy it i'm gonna buy it anyway uh but boy it sure be nice and it would give me a chance to kind of dig into some of this stuff and i'll preview on the show and keith was very nice and said yes here you go and i said is it okay if i preview it on the show and he said yes go ahead and preview it on the show so i get to preview it on the show uh the artwork in my little lower right corner is actually from the book as well and we're going to go through it today so i've had a chance to let me pull up let me go to the table of contents here so you guys can see some stuff whenever there's a missing piece of art there's a <laughs> big picture of banana with duct tape which i think is pretty awesome so a great big list of people who did this play testers that are involved uh wayne like i said wayne chang was the producer of it i think uh, Wayne and Keith worked together to kind of put this whole thing together. Keith has been working on this for a long time, and he's been uh, putting out previews of it, preview chapters and preview discussions about it on his website um, for a long time. And a lot of people I'm waiting for this are really excited. I hope that they this this the, the, the full cover, it looks just awesome. The full cover, I think, is, is it, um, it's supposedly allies of the Droam fighting back uh, minions of the... Um, uh, the Dreaming Dark, I think, or, or uh, not the Dreaming Dark, uh, of Kyber, uh, the the uh, the dragon, the cult of the dragon below, I think. I could be wrong. I think it says, why don't I read? Uh, Daughters of Sor uh, enigmatic, eight of the uh, drums, enigmatic Daughters of Sorakel and the bold adventurers known as the Badgers have opened up a portal to Dalcor, so it is the Dreaming Dark. 
An achievement long thought impossible. Can the artificer Della D Dickenath master the dream orb lost Dull Azor before her comrades are overwhelmed by Dolora and to Sukora Cory? So yeah, this is dreaming dark stuff. Uh, uh, good to showcase. Good to be able to showcase new material just as it becomes available. Good PR for the book. That's my hope. Yeah, and I was hoping that this would be a mutually beneficial thing that I would be able to show off the book, um, and and uh, uh, help people get to see what awesome stuff is in this, and uh, at the same time I would get to squeeze it and capitalize even more off of the material of Eberron for my own campaign. Uh, so yeah, Keith Baker put this together. That's what's really cool. And I'm not going to get into the whole history of Eberron. If you want to read about how Eberron came to be, it's a very interesting story about a contest that Wizards of the Coast did back in the early 2000s. Um, and they got lots and lots of submissions and then they kept narrowing, narrowing, narrowing down until eventually they um, centered on Eberron with Keith and they brought Keith in and Keith and a bunch of the designers inside Wizards of the Coast put together Eberron and then released it as a new setting. They put out a whole bunch of books. All the books for Eberron are available on the DMs Guild. Many of them have material that are really good for even if you're running 5th edition. So good stuff. So yeah, uh, the book as it stands, I think it's the... Um, uh, oh, I didn't read the disclaimer. Uh, we'll save the disclaimer another time. Uh, so it is a pretty big book. It is 246 pages. So about the same. What's the original? What's the what's the Light Rising Last War book? Is, is it 320? 320 for the original book. So, you know, a nice big chunk of extra material. And Keith wrote this knowing what was going to be in Rising of the Last War. So there is very little duplication of material, uh, which is pretty great. Um, it's kind of funny. The, the one thing, like when I was thinking about, well, what do I want from this? What I want most from this book is lore. I just want to like bathe in Eberron lore and I want to dive deeper into things that are only touched upon, like the Droam and like the Dakani and, you know, like, like these, like, like the, you know, the, the, the various planes of existence. I wanted more material than the book has. The book only kind of describes some of those areas in, in, um, you know, a little bit. And so one nice thing is like this book doesn't really talk about Sharn. You know, there's not big sections on Sharn because Eberron, the main book, has tons of stuff about Sharn. So like you really, you really don't need it. Uh, I didn't want a whole bunch of character options because it's like, well, there's A, because I'm a DM and character options just complicate my life, right? But I know players want character options. And I know that you also want to make a book that is uh, palatable, something that players would want to grab too. So there are definitely character options in here. Um, it's not a ton. So I think like, if you look, like chapter six are all the character options and it's 205, you know, page 205 to 218. So that's what, 13 pages? Uh, so not a ton of material out of the 246 pages for player-based stuff. Um most of it is lore and that's exactly what i want like i want to just you know be able to dive into it uh random physics said i found that I prefer keith's interpretation of Eberlon there yeah well we get of course right why wouldn't we why wouldn't we prefer keith's interpretation so um yeah so lots of lots of options there uh so uh beautiful artwork in this book too like here's a really cool the druid you know a, a warforged druid which with flowers all over him. just awesome stuff so there's uh, I'm curious how much new, new for someone who's bathed. I don't know. So Snark Knight asks, how much is new compared to what was available in 3.5? I can't answer that because I am not, I have not, I didn't dive too deeply into what 3.5 has. Um, I am familiar with the book on Sharn. I'm familiar with the, I think a book of five nations. Do I have that one? Uh, and the Zen, Zendrak. Um, I'm, 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 you know, very, not very, you know, I gave it a good solid read. I've read it recently, the Zendrak book. And I don't think this covers Zendrak. So they really tried to, you know, to, to focus on areas that I don't think have been covered in many other books. You'd have to tell me if there are 3.5 books that cover things like Droam, Dakan, Moorholds, and Thunder Sea. Um, I don't think that there is much of that. And if you look at that, like that is from from 80 page 81 to 241 so about 60 pages uh to cover uh droam dakan more holds and thunder sea and uh so those i think are really neat you know two of those four are things i'm like involved in right now in my own campaign so it's great that i can that i can dive in uh and and get them uh, a fair bit about the uh the the gods Face of Eberron, 40, page 49 to page 76. What's that, about 25 pages? Yeah, sounds right, 26, 27 pages uh, to cover the gods. And they go into more detail than the gods do in the book. So that's kind of nice. Like um, there, there's, I think there's like one little breakout box that talks about 
um, the uh, the Daleker, and this one has a lot more about the Daleker. I guess they're not really in the God section, uh, but like yeah, the the um, the Dark Six are in here, right? And the Dark Six are um, uh, covered in more detail than they were otherwise. They, I think they just had a couple of descriptions in the main book, and they have a big description here. So yeah, beautiful art, really nice preface by by Keith that talks about how this book came to be. Uh, with a little little piece of his own artwork just to show what he was given given you know the people here again beautiful I just love the art you know they really went out on the art on this book I think I mean it pro would it be too much to say that this might be the most successful DM Guild product for a while I think so I mean it's gorgeous um, really well done if you look at it and the screen doesn't really do justice to it um, it looks very much like an official Watsi product. Like they, they clearly, with the page design and everything like that, stuck to uh, a, a wizard's style format and it, and it shows throughout this. So really cool timeline, you know, big, big, big timeline that covers main events that have occurred over time, the dragons, the coming of the dragons, the age of monsters, uh, and then more recent events by timeline. And I found this to be really handy because it told me, there were a few pieces in here that I immediately stuck into my Notion. I have a Notion notebook now of like other things. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, notes from, you know, notes from Beyond Eberron. Uh, I copied and pasted some of these right out of here because I wanted to learn more about the history of Sharn, like what's underneath Sharn and what you would find when you go into old Sharn. And I found uh, some good lore here because that's all Dakani ruins. So to me, like, the Dakani are going to show up in a couple of areas. One is there's ruins all over the place of, of the, the Dakani or the goblin, the goblin empire that existed. Um, and there's not a whole ton of Dakani stuff inside the main books, but, or inside the, the, the core, the core Eberron book, but there's a lot of it in here. So, um, there's a lot of good opportunity to squeeze it out. And this shorter timeline, really handy. Uh, and, and pretty, pretty detailed. Uh, and then it goes into like what, you know, the war of the mark and the kingdom of Gallifer. Uh, I like this, like, why does it matter? You know, like what's the, what's the sort of summary of, of, of what occurs and they don't have it here, but in other areas, um, they have like bullet point, you know, little bu bullet point stuff. So that like, if you just need to grab it real quick and summarize, you can do that. And I think that that's a really handy way to make a book like this. Uh, to remember the fact that it's like a 240 page book among thousands of books. And even though it's an awesome book, and even though we should sit and read it cover to cover, we're busy and we got games to run and things to do. So, um, yeah, so, so lots to do there. Uh, Phil, Phil Bell 120 says they're going to run it in Pathfinder 2. One cool thing about this book, and I would say it's probably true with the main book too. Um, I mean, the main book obviously has lots of stuff from a mechanic standpoint, but not a ton. And you could really take this setting and run it in any system. I don't think you would have to. There's, if you think about like the word count that's expended upon mechanics versus the word count, this the crunch versus fluff. This is heavy, heavy in the fluff, which is probably not a, you know, it's kind of a derogatory term, um, I think. But you know, the the lore, we'll go with lore, right? The the amount of information in here that you can use from a setting perspective, that you can use from a lore perspective, very, very high. So even if you're playing in another system, but you want to play with Eberron, it's a good one. And I would say, like, even if you don't play in Eberron, digging into a system like this and seeing how they treat uh, different aspects of traditional fantasy is really cool. And I, and I dig it. The idea of a goblin empire that was, like, one of the most powerful empires. Like, normally goblins are thrown in little caves and off to the side and you never pay any attention to them. In this case, like, they used to rule for, like, 10,000 years. You know, and there's these huge monuments, these hobgoblin statues that are carved out of mountainside. So really great stuff. Uh, whole thing about Sire before the morning, which is pretty great. There's a section on this in the main book, but I think it's more in, in depth here. Uh, again, there's that piece of art that I have on the other side. Uh, a lot about like how to play a character from this. This is something the main book does too, right? Like where, what if you're from here? So this is where this book can be useful for players. If you're a player who wants to dive heavily into Eberron lore. There's no reason you can't. And I don't think this one really has like major secrets that would get broken. Like I can't even tell. Someone's going to have to tell me. Is the fact that um, Lady Elmaro is the leader of the, Eber of the Emerald Claw and that they've broken away from uh, Karnath, is that a secret? Like I don't know how secret that should be. And in my world, I just kind of made it known. So, you know, there's stuff like that where, you know, I don't know how much of a, of a you know, 
how much it matters. A uh, whole section on the last war with a big section on like the artillery, like, like what are the weapons that were used during the last war, siege staves and long rods and these kind of interesting things. That's kind of cool. I don't know if I'll use them. I guess it's the kind of thing like if you're walking around in the morning. Uh, Snark Knight says, yep, that's a secret, uh, Lady Omaro and the and thing. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of hard. Like, It's one of those things like the minute a player learns it, they've learned it forever. And if they've been played Eberron ever, they'll know it, right? Um, really funny. There's a huge, long sidebar about the scale of damage and the fact that like a, a a siege weapon that only does 16 points of damage would kill most normal people so don't you know it it's not like it should be doing tons of damage and it compares that to fireball it's kind of neat um it's nerdy to explain how and why but it's a secret gotcha snark knight sometime you'll have to clue me in uh so a fair bit about the last war warforged titans uh this kind of stuff which is covered a, a fair bit in the um uh Covered a fair bit in the main book, too. Uh, Magic of the World. I haven't really read this section yet. I didn't really look into it. Uh, so I kind of like this, though. Magical ambiance. I love tables like this. And I don't. I didn't see a ton of them in here. There might be more that I missed. But I really love these 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 kind of tables. I find it really, really useful to, to be able to grab it and use it as, as we play. Um, yeah, Mage Right. So they, they, they talk about this in the main book, too. Uh, magical services, like an ex, 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 uh, expansion on that. Uh, love the art again, really cool artwork. Um, artificer techniques. So, you know, more about artificers, but this is more, this is not, uh, heavy on the mechanics side. This is more on the, like what it means to be an artificer, uh, and how, how that works. So, you know, definitely it's got like cool background ideas. Atmosphere tables are the best. Um, says Bex. Yes. Very cool. I love this piece of art. I don't know. There's something about it. And it's got Keith's hat. A little, a little, you know, like anybody who knows Keith, there's Keith's hat right there. Clearly somebody did it, but I kind of dig this. Like, which, you know, who do you want to be? Warforged? You know, you get to choose. Um, races of Eberron. Uh, so this again is more about where the races came from than, uh, uh, than like, you know, um, mechanically stuff like the, you know, the races are already well articulated in, in, uh, uh, the main book. So this is more, if you want to know about shifters and how, or changelings and how changelings fit into society and who they are, you know, these different groups, uh, you know, you can, you can really dig into this. It's a good way. If you're a DM and you've got time on your hands to read all this stuff, it's worth reading it through and then kind of giving your players ideas about you know, more background on their character than they might know because they're probably, you know, I don't know if your players are like my players, but they don't always dive that deep into the lore. So you can kind of offer more options, uh, which is great. Uh, Aranal, lots of stuff here. Yeah, so more stuff about the Aranai, the, the elves, Kalishtar, whole section on the Kalishtar and how they connect to the world, the Dalcor and the Quarry. You know, pages and pages of that, which is really cool. Again, not real heavy on the mechanic side, but more about what it means. Same with Shifters uh, and Warforge, of course. And Warforge is so popular. Um, so good good stuff here. Banana picture. Face of Eberron. So this is sort of an expansion. Uh, much of this chapter is a book of both players and DMs. Some information lies ahead that isn't common knowledge to the player characters. So yeah, they even mentioned that. New characters are proficiency in rhythm. Don't automatically know the deep lore of their faith. So that's probably where we get into some of the stuff of the, the end, who the dreaming dark is. Uh, they have like bits of, uh, I like this too. There's, there's these bits of fiction uh, at the beginning of the chapters. And it's just fun to read that and sort of, again, sort of steep yourself in the lore of Eberron. So I really like it. I, I mean, my only complaint is, boy, I wish I had had this in hand six months ago, right? Like, obviously, you know, it is what it is. But, and, and for those who have not yet started an Eberron campaign, it's great that it's out now. And I'll probably run another Eberron campaign in the future, and, and or I'll keep this one going longer than I expect, and I can kind of shift the plot, uh, plot around. But if I had more opportunity to read this, it's, it's kind of unfortunate that like my knowledge of Eberron is growing as my campaign is growing, but it meant I could have done a lot more in the beginning that I didn't do. So such is life. Uh, so lots of stuff about uh, divinity. Uh, and how that works. I appreciate the spoiler alert per chapter. Yeah, spoiler alert per chapter is really handy. Um, part about the Kalishtar. Yeah, there's lots There's lots going on in there. It's Silver Flame. What's going on there? Silver Flame has been covered pretty pretty extensively. Um, uh, what the Silver Flame considers to be evil. Kind of cool. Uh, what Herod, you know, lots. Wow, look at all the stuff in the Silver Flame. Tons of stuff in the Silver Flame. So so that's that's really good. Um, if you if you want to dig into that as a major thing. Blood of Vol. Yeah, here's a whole section of the Blood of Vol. They're kind of an interesting. They got a whole thing going on. Uh, 
and lots of material. Oh, and here's a whole section on the Order of the Emerald Claw and how that broke away. And they say, well, we're not really part of the Blood Evolve anymore. Blood Evolve disavows their knowledge. Sovereigns in the Six. I guess they just call them the Six. They don't call them the Dark Six in here. So that's interesting. Um, and uh, yeah, lots of stuff about, you know, like I said, they, they, they kind of dig more into these, um, uh, each one. And then here's the Dark, yeah, they do call it Dark Six in the World, right? And they have these long, like this, the, these sections for each of the six are way longer than the two or three sentences that it had. Um, so uh, yeah, lots lots of material here uh, about the cults of the dragon below. A ton of stuff on the cults of the dragon below and the different cults that exist, right? So one thing about the cult of the dragon below is that, yeah, I know I needed it too. I had to beg, but I got it. I got it so I could show you guys, but it'll be out soon. Um, so... Uh, one of the things about the cult of the dragon below, this is the cult of Kyber, is that there isn't one cult. There's a bunch of cults. And they call them the cult of the dragon below because it's just easier to put a label on them and throw them all down in the world and then forget about them. But um, there's really a lot more going on in here. Uh, and all different descriptions of the individual cults and what they mean and who they follow and all that stuff. Really great, really great stuff. Um, I'm, you know, I'm skimming. Uh, how to play, you know, cultists or fallen cultists. Strange gods. They have a thing about the becoming god, which is cool. This is like the good guy, war, new Warforged god. And one of my players is about the uh, about the becoming god. So having a nice section here on the becoming god is going to be cool. Section about the Lord of Blades, also pretty popular. Draconic Prophecy, just a little touch. Um, so uh, again, really cool. Our Asimar, whole thing about the Asimar and their, how they kind of have two sides. Uh, so that's that's pretty cool too what the asimar means uh and the faiths of the asimar oh, look at that art man just badass art uh how they fit i love look at that picture crazy mind flare talking to all the people below so uncharted domains right so this is the big sections i was talking about this is the these are the sections i was most looking forward to and it was to touch upon the major two two of the four major factions that i'm actually using in my game right now uh which is droam and um uh and and um the connie and fair bit of stuff so like the droam talks about you know how they came when the daughters came putting together all the tribes of this this, this monstrous race what the political structure is it talks about the three um, it talks about the three daughters, Katra, Mana, and Teresnia. These are three hags that rule over the Drawn Nation, which is just awesome. Um, you know, and it doesn't like have stat blocks for like what, what, you know, if, if you're going to fight them, what are they like? And I kind of dig that because like, I just, I don't need big stat blocks. Like I'll just take a hag and I'll give it like double or triple the hit points and I'll, or, or the two phase approach, like from, um, uh, what's it called? The new book that came out, Theros. Uh, and I'll throw Archmage stat blocks on them, right? You get three Archmages. And a bunch of legendary actions and whatnot. Uh, tons of stuff about the Drum and how they work. Hey, look, a whole section on cuisine. What did the Drum eat, right? Very cool. Um, wide Monster. Uh, wide Magic Civilization, Five Nations. That's kind of interesting. So lots of stuff. I, I, I have not, I've, I've skimmed this stuff just to see what's in here. I haven't read it yet. I've started reading it and there's a lot to read and I'm, I can't wait to kind of dig in more if I ever get bored. I, like I'm time to read this stuff. Who are all the various races? I love that there's more Medusa in here. Where's the cool Medusa picture? I think I skipped past it. Right there. Yeah, the kind of Medusa walking through the city streets pulling off her veil. I had a veiled Medusa in my um, in my game. One of the bodyguards of uh, Cavella uh, of the Dask. It was like the nation. So it's fantastic stuff. Denizens of the Drum. Yeah, that's, I, I talked about this. A lot about trolls and war trolls. So, um, yeah, really great stuff. Who the daughters are. Sora Ketra, the voice. Uh, Sora Mania, Mania, the fist. She's the powerful one. And there's like a picture of them, right? So now we got an actual picture of the, the daughters of Sora call. And um, Sora Tazina, the dreaming, the dream of Drom, right? She sees the future. Yeah, great big book. Really, really good stuff. Why go to the why go to Drom? And then it's got a whole thing about the Knolls of Zinir Pact. Um, you know, one thing about Knoll, Knolls are different in Eberron than they are in the main world. In the main world, they are creatures of, of the blood of Yinagu. And in this one, they are an actual like race with their own ideas. So um, in 3.5, Ketra is a 13th level bard, but no stat block. Yeah, I would make him. If you're ruling over a nation of monsters, you're going to be 20th level. You probably maxed out your level. 
Uh, so the Zaneer clans, yeah, here's these cool gnolls. I don't think, that are gnolls a race that you can play in the main book? I think they might be. Um, so I can't remember if gnolls are a playable race. And it, um, they could be. Uh, the heirs of Takan, right? So this is the other, uh, this is the other main um, uh, thing that I was looking forward to because I wanted to get into the old ruins underneath old Sharn and I need to know about the Dakan. And it's got a whole thing about the Dakan, really deep history of the Dakani Empire, the Goblinoid Empire. And this is something like you could probably, so talking about like stripping it for parts, um, you could certainly pull out any one of these major factions, the Droam, the Dakani, um, the more holds, and you can drop them in your own world. You can, uh, you know, p p you know, mismatch. So if you decide like goblins are boring in your world, take this Takani thing and throw it right in. And now you got cool goblins, right? Like, you know, there's a lot you can just sort of grab and, and take, um, you know, and throw right in. So yeah, it's really good. Radio Geek says, can't wait for the book. I can't wait for it either. I, I have, obviously I've got a PDF, but I want the physical one. I want a nice big book in my, you know, so I'm looking, I'm as, I'm looking forward to it as much as you guys are. Um, so a whole bunch of stuff about the Dakani. Yeah. I got to skip. A second. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Look at that. Like cool goblins, right? Like these are not your, you know, hiding in a cave goblin. Look at the goblin with his mask is that looks like a samurai mask, right? Isn't that awesome? I just love this stuff. So I really, I, I got to say like the more I play it, the more I'm falling in love with Eberron. I loved it to begin with, but I'm, I'm loving it even more. Right. Um, Ninja goblins. Yeah. Uh, has here's you know Dakani like what do you if you are if you are a Dakani what can you do uh, lots of cool things about how you might break away or what trinkets you might have how the classes fit in this is I love this picture this is from the main book too uh, but the giant you know hobgoblin statues um, you know giant hobgoblin statues uh, that have been carved out of the Dakani Empire because they had a big empire and that's really cool uh, whole glossary for terms so like you want to use some cool terms uh, you can use them in here. Um, there will be a print version of this. Uh, I'm pretty, I'm 95% sure. I think that's why it's taken as long as it has to come out. So yeah, it's coming out. Uh, by the way, thank you to those of you who are answering the questions and the people who are just dropping in. Saves me a little bit of time. Um, the more holds. So there hasn't been a lot about the more holds, right? And I think one of the criticisms of the more holds is like unlike, so many of the aspects of f traditional fantasy have been rethought, but the dwarves, a criticism is that the dwarves hadn't been rethought. I haven't read this yet to kind of say like, is this really different than kind of, you know, dwarves who go underground and they have forges and they make stuff. Um, you know, I have to, to kind of dig into it, but it's definitely has like a lot of stuff going on here. I don't know anything about the Moorhold. So it might be very cool. You could run a, um, you know, you could run a Moorhold adventure uh, and kind of start it there. And again, tons, you know, like just tons of material. The realms below. There probably is a good bit about about uh, um, Kyber, the 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 you know the realms of Kyber uh, that exist beneath the world. Spoils of war, and I think they're probably the group that's fighting Kyber back the most now. The the who was it that did? Was it did the goblins fight Kyber back? And, and the Drow also fight Kyber back. So there's lots of groups that are fighting Kyber. Kyber's nasty. A uh, bunch of clans. Uh, cool like cities. All that kind of stuff. Uh, Lost Clan, the Orcs. Huh? The Thunder Sea. So this is a whole nation that exists underwater. And I think that this is one like they certainly haven't touched on. I don't believe it's in any other existing books. And it's the whole thing about like the, 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 the um, who are they? The, I keep wanting to say Shutterkai. Not Shutterkai. What are they? Man, we just fought a whole bunch of them. Sea Goblins. Uh, Sahuigan. Yeah. So there's a whole bunch about Sahuigan and, and again, sort of like the goblins, like the Sahuigan aren't just goblins of the sea. They actually have a whole bunch going on here. Again, I don't know anything about this. Uh, it wasn't something that I was running. So, uh, I haven't spent any time at all really looking into this, but it looks very cool. And I think you could do a lot of cool stuff. You could probably take this whole section and drop it into your ghost of salt marsh game, right? It might've been kind of cool to, grab this whole section and use it as the background of the Sahuagin in Ghost of Saltmarsh. Just off the top of my head, that would be something that'd be very cool. You just, you know, the more lore you've got, the more you can tap into. Look at that, like a Sahuagin in it. Cool. Spectres of Salt Shard. I don't know what that is. Um, oh, and then a big whole thing about the Abolis of the Darkest Whoa, look at that. That's some craziness going on there. Whoa. 
Whoa. Awesome. Planes of existence, a whole section on the planes because the planes in Eberron are different than the planes elsewhere. I kind of I mean, screwed up as a little extreme, but I threw the elemental planes in here directly. I actually had the elemental princes show up for my Wednesday group because it was really easy to drop in. Um, so, but I know that there aren't connections to the elemental planes like there are elsewhere. Uh, and if I'd had this chapter, I could have dug into that a little bit more. Um, yeah, it looks like a Doctor Strange panel. Uh, lots of cool art, lots of unique, big full page art. So uh, tons of stuff about the planes. I'm presumed that the planes, somebody can tell me if in 3.5 they covered the planes a lot, but I know it wasn't covered very extensively in uh, fifth edition stuff. Um, was there an Eberron for fourth? There was a fourth edition Eberron stuff, uh, but I, I presume the fourth edition stuff was very heavy mechanic focused because most fourth edition. Dalcor, right? Lots of stuff about Dalcor. And I'm, I'm playing a lot with Dalcor stuff. And the orbs, and I think there's actually a thing about orbs in here. I kind of dropped it in myself, but I guess we're just happen to be thinking the same way. Um, Realm of the Dead. So all kinds of stuff on the planes. Great stuff. Sea of Flame. Oh, look at that. Yeah, so Sea of Flame, I guess this is kind of your, is this is Sea of Flame sort of your, uh, yeah, this is kind of your, uh, Fer uh, Fernia, right? So I should have dropped Fernia in. Oh, look, and it's got the Elemental Prince symbol. I don't know if that's the same one for fire. But that's kind of cool. Um, and uh, yeah, wow. Look at that. Pit Fiends, man. Uh, Eternal Dawn. All kinds of stuff. Look at it again. Like big, you know, big stuff. So what is that? Pyramids on giant gears. Oh, that's the Turning Chaos. So this is their version of Limbo, right? Kyther, 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 Kyther. They're kind of limbo. And they got Gazari. Yeah. One thing about Eberron when they designed it is it, it there's a place for everything D&D &D in it, right? One of the things that was their requirement was you weren't allowed to say, in my world, there isn't X, Y, and Z. There are no dragons in my world. No dragons, no giants, no goblins. Uh, you know, Eberron was designed with you, you, anything that's in the main books of D&D &D ought to be able to go into Eberron. You can reflavor it however you want, but it's got to be. So that's why we can have like nice gnolls and, and you know, goblin empires and stuff like that. Um, cannibal halflings. Look at that. That's awesome. What a cool piece of art. Ah, uh, Endless Night. That's a bad place. I bet the liches hang out there. Um, so lots and lots of stuff. Uh, I love that. Look at that piece of art, right? It's like Sea of Eternal Ice. Rizia, the Plane of Ice, right? And it's got this like massive, uh, what are those things called? Uh, Remoraz, huge Remoraz. So pretty awesome. Yeah, for those of you who just came in here and they wanted to find out about this, they just uh, this will be up on YouTube. Um, I'm closing in on the end, uh, but I'm going to have a YouTube video that'll be up later today. So uh, and I'll post it on Twitter. So you can take a either subscribe. Hey, this is a good pitch. Go to YouTube and uh, find me on YouTube and subscribe. And later today, you will get a uh, notification that I have a new video and the new video will be about uh, this. So, yeah. Um, cause I do have a game to prep today and important things to prep. What is that? The eternal battleground. Look at that place. Oh, I don't want to go there. That looks stressful. So I haven't looked at any of this, right? I, I, I just started thinking, oh man, God, I love the art, right? Layers of, oh, look at that. There's heavenly fairy court. I presume they have a lower a lower fairy court realm of madness zoriat the realm of madness little cool symbols for each of them too that's kind of cool yeah this looks right out of uh and i stole ideas from this too right out of uh hellraiser 2 where they go to hell and it looks like a giant maze and it has the they call it the leviathan which is like a huge you know i guess their god um yeah and it's like an endless maze it looks like that but there's another endless maze only it's made out of tentacles my friend Mike Schiller would like this. Whole realm made out of tentacles. He laughs at the fact that I drop tentacles into my game all over the place. Uh, what is that? What's going on here? Oh, character options. So yeah, so then there is a section on character options. Like I said, it's about 15 pages. It's not a huge section. And it's less interesting to me. Uh, it, I'm sure it goes right up against the character options that exist in Eberron. So you can use these two together to really kind of you know, make your characters unique. If you're really, oh, that's grim. Uh, if you're really into your characters, you can do so here. Uh, and it's got some feats, racial feats and stuff like that. 
Uh, those are always good. Tough part with the feats is, um, if you know, a lot of people now are spoiled with D&D Beyond. If it's not D&D Beyond, they don't really like it. But you never know. Maybe they'll end up as a custom option. Um, uh, a couple of different new domains as well, looks like. Way of the Living Weapon, kind of stuff like that. Uh, and then items. Treasure is good. You can always drop in treasure uh, and, and you know, pull it out of different books. So did this copy have a banana? Uh, this copy has an actual banana. That has a banana, yeah. Uh, there are bananas throughout. Uh, new spells? No, these are items still. Uh, and more on dragon mark things, miscellaneous items. Oh, look at that. That's grim. Ugh, creepy. I don't even want to know what she's holding. Is that her own hand? Looks like her own hand. Foes. Uh, the more big boss monsters, you know. Uh, Valara and some others. Uh, Fey rulers. The forest queen. Uh, and the shadow, you know, forgotten prince. Um, lots of cool stuff there. And I think we're closing in. The quarry. More quarry. At least one more quarry. Quarry of the Dreamscape people. And that's it. So that was the 36-minute preview of uh, Exploring Eberron uh, by Keith uh, Keith Baker and Wayne Chang. And it's soon to be available on the DMs Guild, I believe, this month. Uh, uh, available in hardcover on the DMs Guild. Available for purchase same day PDF is released. Very good. I went to order a copy. Um, thank you all in the chat for uh, helping to share. So now I've got 25 minutes. We gotta we gotta buckle down. Gotta get to work. So thank you for uh, um, uh, thank you for hanging out while we were going through the book. But now time to talk about my game. Uh, so first thing we need to do, uh, we go to my session planning template, and we duplicate. If you're unfamiliar with what this is, this is Notion. Notion.so is what I do my game prep in. We pop this open. We uh, it is 19 July. 2020, Sunday, Eberron. Uh, so I have my notes. Uh, we review the characters. Uh, so let's drop in here. We go to my Sunday characters. And those characters are uh, Zarentir Delander. Uh, he is a dragon marked member of the uh, Storm. Uh, Cleric of Storm, this should be wide, full width. Why did that not work? Mm. Weird. Um, what if I close it and open it again? Nope. Uh, Tempest Storm Cleric Sorcerer, uh, Mark of Storm, uh, and he is just about to steal his dad's ship, uh, the Gold Bright. So uh, in the last session of the game, I don't remember what happened at the beginning of the game. They finished up... Oh, they, they had just killed Lord Crash, who is the leader of the Emerald Claw in Sharn. They took out the chip that he had in his head uh, a crystal, a, a kyber crystal that had an etched of his personality, and it was placed inside of a special one-way firewall uh, and then put inside of um, Shift's head. Uh, and now, so Shift now has her brother's, Shift is the Warforged, one of the first Warforged, and Lord Crash is a Warforged uh, that worked for the Emerald Claw that was her brother. So now she has her brother's personality inside of her head. She can ask it questions, and it can kind of like, it can observe, but it can't do anything. And I had them roll a check, and it was relatively low for how good the firewall mechanism was. And they're worried about the firewall um, not working. That 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 could crash, take over, shift at the wrong moment. And it's possible. Crash is trying to say, like, hey, we got to go meet our mother. Our mother is uh, Lady Omaro. She made us both, and she made you and me, and she's got lots of answers to all your questions. And and she's she wants what's best for the world, and that's why we're doing what we're going to do. And they're like, e you're evil. So anyway, they were then, they said and said, okay, we need to, oh, we, they came out and they said, um, uh, uh, Leto Skull, a uh, Orem member and breakaway member of the Dask, who is the main villain in this campaign so far, uh, has the Book of Kulsir and has a uh, massive Kyber or massive Eberron crystal. And he is getting in his ship known as the Night Sky and he is flying off to, um, uh, he's flying away. Uh, he, in his wake, knowing that the characters were pains in the asses, he set up a, uh, a, a contract with House Tarkanon, the assassins of House Tarkanon. And he said, I want you to, when there is a witness, if these characters come back, because they, they, they all fake their own death, if we hear about them, I want you to kill them. So House Tarkanon said, all right, give us, you know, 
50,000 gold pieces and we will have four of our best work on it. The four best were two mages, two veterans. And uh, he actually hired a bunch of other House Tarkanon guys, which he has on his on his ship. Um, so uh, Snark Dice says, what a dick. Yeah, he is a dick. So the characters are like, hey, we, we know that Leto Skull is flying away on the night sky. We're going to have to go steal the Goldbright, my dad's ship. So they are heading towards the Goldbright, and somebody recognizes uh, him and says, I thought you were dead. And he goes, no, I'm not dead. And then someone else says, hey, is that Shane Husk, the writer? And everyone's like, oh, look, it's Shane Husk. I thought Shane Husk died. And he's like, yes, everybody, I'm not dead. It turns out I'm alive all along. And then, boom, like <laughs> Tarkanon assassins literally teleport in, start Kona colding them, hacking them with swords, flames coming off their blades. They're all dragon marked up, so they have weird powers. I'll give you a dragon. You want a new, a cool thing about aberrant dragon marks? You can just do whatever you want. You don't, you don't you're like, hey, should one of them have improved invisibility? Guess what their their uh, aberrant dragon mark lets them do? Fire shield. One of them had like flame weapon, and the other one had fire shield. Um, you see, the cool thing about um, dragon mark uh, uh, enemies with aberrant dragon marks is you can essentially give any reasonable spell to a normal NPC. So you could give them, for example, the equivalent of a globe of invulnerability. Uh, the counter spells flew like crazy. I think there was a scene where five counter spells went off in one scene, or maybe at least four. I think it was four counter spells triggered off and still didn't stop the spell, which is a Kona cold. Uh, so we are now have to change the um, dialogue for how counter spell works because I have so many. I have three characters in my group that can counter spell. So it was three characters in the three characters can counter spell and two NPCs could counter spell. So there could have been five counter spells being thrown around. Um, which really sucks. If you ever want spells to go off in a game, well, there's a bunch of ways to handle a counter spell, but that's probably another topic. Uh, but you kind of have to change to describe it. And instead, what you have to do is you have to say the the mage begins to cast a spell, and then you wait, and they say, "Oh, I counter spell it," and you're like, "Okay." And then if somebody says, "Well, I want to figure out what it is," you're like, "Well, it takes a reaction to figure out what spell they're casting." You can do so, or someone else can try to do it and use their reaction. Um, <laughs> Shane Husk pulled a new Coke. Yes. Um, and and you can try to detect it. And they go, it's going to be a cold, a cold. And they go, oh, I'll counterspell it, right? Um, so there's there's a bunch of stuff like that. Anyway, they those guys beat the hell out of characters, I'll tell you. Four, two veterans, two mages really put the hurting on the characters. I think they knocked a couple of them out. And it was tough. And then the characters quickly, while the chaos was going on, they ran onto the Goldbright. And the, the game is now starting on the Goldbright. So that's the, the start of the game. But the characters are... Um, uh, Zarantir, who is stealing his father's ship. Saber, uh, who is the um, long tooth shifter monk uh, and a bounty hunter. He is a member of the uh, Four Wind, the Order of the Four Winds, a tribe of shifter monks from the Eldian Reaches, who have a secret little pocket universe that they can go to that's inside the Dalcor, where they can uh, talk to one another and hang out. I want to do more with that. Uh, Shift is the uh, Warforge, one of the first Warforge ever created. Uh, uh, Warforge Pact of the Undying and her Pact magic comes from uh, Lady Omaro. And I think that's that's a secret. I need to I need to put that in the secrets. Uh, let's go here. I'm going to open this in a new window so I can... Uh, secrets and clues, because I don't know if I have that in there. Um, Shifts uh, Warlock is Lady Lady Omaro I don't know. So, um, uh, oh, and then the other one is Saber. Can meet with members of the Four Winds in a Dal Core Dreamscape Monk. Sort of like the Matrix, right? Sort of like the training area in the Matrix. Um, we got that. Uh, so, yeah. So, Shift now has her brother's... Uh, one, one note about Shift is that uh, has her brother... Has crashes. Lord crashes memory. You can do some really fun cyberpunk stuff. Like one kind of fun thing. So Shift, uh, Juliet, who plays Shift, was kind of into the cyberpunk style of um, um, uh, 
of of Eberron. And so I'm kind of playing off of that. Like the idea that she has now multiple personalities in her head is very much from Neuromancer. Like if you've ever read William Gibson's Neuromancer, which is I think one of my favorite books of all time, um, Case, who's the main character, goes and uh, rescues a guy named Dixie Flatline, who was one of the best hackers ever, but he died and his memory was implanted on a ROM construct. And Case will then jack the ROM construct into his hardware when he's going and doing hacking. And he can talk to Dixie, who will actually help him do stuff. And Dixie isn't an AI. He's like a, a imprint personality. And so the same thing, like Crash is dead. In this case, Crash isn't really dead because he literally took the crystal that had Crash's personality and put it in her head. So it's not a copy of Crash. It is Crash, right? It's different than if she'd copied it over and destroyed the crystal or something like that. So, um, yeah. Today's show might go a little long. We'll see. Um, and somebody says you like the way that links work. Yeah, I really love how links work. You do you at sign and you can link to any other page. Uh, so that is shift. Shane Husk is the author. Uh, faked his own death. Uh, that actually, all the characters faked their own death. Uh, now came back, and I think he's got some connection with the heirs of Dakan. Previously served with the heirs of Dakan as a military strategist. So he is a member of the the uh, what's the group? The the new Dakan people. Uh, and now we have more. Um. Uh, notions, uh, uh, sorry, uh, no, 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 Nullzone says, can you share a notion workbook with other people? Yes. And yeah, the question is, would it work with a group wiki? Yes, it can work with a group wiki. In fact, Juliet uh, has a group wiki that we use for this. The trick for me is like, I can't really keep up. I'm, I'm lazy and I'm bo busy all the time. I can't keep up a player focused notebook at the same time as a notebook for me. It would mean kind of splitting a lot of it off. So like, I should be able to like share a lot of this, but I have like secret stuff in here that I don't want them to see. So I can't really share it. So it's a little tricky. You could do it. And probably there might be a way to structure where you can have sort of your player facing stuff and your DM secret stuff. I'm not able to do that. I can't get my head there. Stay on brand. I'm lazy. I'll say I'm lazy. Reality is I'm busy all the time. I got a bunch of things going on. Uh, banner. Uh, Banner is a Warforged uh, paladin of the Becoming God. You remember I was talking about the Becoming God when we were talking about exploring Eberron. Now I actually know more about the Becoming God. And I think when we go to the Mornlands, uh, this is going to be a bigger deal. So, um, yeah, uh, I like him a lot. Arwen, she, she has the crystal around her neck. She found out that the crystal, the word to open the crystal is known only by Crash. And Crash did not give it up. So Crash says, I'll give you the crystal when we're at the moment where we're going to use it. But I'm not giving it to you beforehand because I'm afraid you'll, I'm afraid you'll just toss me aside. So they have to keep crash around because he's the only one who has the key to open up the crystal that chi has around her neck so that they can power up the monorail um uh called uh car shack uh to ride to um uh the glass plateau <sighs> so many things those are the characters. Yay. Go back to second morning. Go to here. And we have reviewed the characters. We'll check that off. What's the strong start? Stealing. I like to think that there's a caretaker for the gold bright. Um, Dawson Riddle, Riddle something. Uh, Riddle Harp. Dawson Riddle Harp. We'll go with. Um... Uh, and they're going to have to kind of convince him like, Hey, everything's good. And he was like, you know, so he's going to be sort of the dupe guy. He kind of works for, um, Zarentir's family and is the caretaker. And they're going to have to kind of deal with him. And he's just sort of like, what, what's going on? Like, are we, where are we going? And he'll, he'll sort of be like a bit of comic relief, uh, in this whole thing. Um, <laughs> no zone says players are responsible for their own notes. Uh, uh, notes if I'm the GM I got too much shit to do uh, I completely I completely agree yeah I don't have time either um, I was more concerned if I'm playing a game if I could uh, use Notion to keep information for the group GM info would be separate yeah you could you could certainly set up a whole um, yeah so he's kind of the quartermaster but he's sort of just yeah he's like a caretaker just make sure it's nice and shiny so uh, stealing the gold bright and then um, the chase, chasing uh, knights. You can also go stealing the Oh, I didn't mean to do that. There we go. 
Stealing the Gulbright, chasing the night sky. That's pretty much today's session. I'm not going to worry about anything else. I know that's going to take all day, so we're not going to worry too much about that. Um, now, I think I have maps. Did I put in maps? I've got the night sky. Yeah, look at that. So I did this last week, right? I've got the night sky, and which is that's what the ship looks like, right? Pretty cool. Um, great big, crazy, sealed up stealth airship. And uh, this is, you know, I'm going to use this as sort of the internal uh, side of, of how this place works. Uh, and the cargo hold is where it's at. Uh, I'm going to skip the secrets and clues for a minute. Normally I wouldn't. And get down to who's here. So we have uh, Lido. Lido Skull is on board uh, and is an Oni. Uh, we have um, Valentine, Valentine Flame Touched, who is a uh, Lamia. We have probably a couple dozen Jackawares. That's probably a lot. We'll do 18 Jackawares. This is the remainder of Valentine's group. Um, probably a couple of. So he probably hired more. So he's probably got a couple of mages. They're seventh level. So seventh level, you just, you know, once they cross fifth level, all that be nice to the characters and worry about counterbalance goes out the window. Um, so we're going to have a couple of mages, a couple of uh, house, uh, and probably a couple of house, uh, a couple of house Tarkanon assassins. Um, I think that's probably pretty good. The jack awares are kind of the main thing. Um, so one of the tricks that I want to do is like illusions, right? And I want to have like, oh, so like illusionary manticores might be kind of fun, right? That are flying around, right? Um, Manticores? What uh what are the other ones? What's the one that has the the dragon and the goat um uh and the uh they have the three heads. What are those guys called? I forget their name. Chimera. Yeah, so illusionary chimeras, plural. Uh what's the CR in a chimera? CR6, those are good. A couple of those are all right. So I think like a couple of chimeras that are that have um, jackawares on their backs and they're actually illusionary. They're illusionary, right? And I I don't I know it's, I always have a hard time running illusions. Um uh, uh, I always um I always have trouble like, you know, if they if like figuring out an illusion. So I think I'm just going to start them out with actual manticores or actual chimeras. And then it'll turn out during the, uh, how do you pronounce it? Is it chimera or chimera? Chimera. I was right. So, um, um, when can they figure out that they're illusions? Probably after they beat the first one. Go, oh my God, those things aren't real. Right. And then like they, if they can like disbelieve, the other one or dispel it, it will disappear out of the air and then jackal jack wares will go falling into the sky. I think that'd be really fun. So yeah, I, I'm gonna kind of play loose with how um you know how that works. Fantastic locations we have Goldbright. And we have Night Sky. And that's it for there. So we're good there. Um, monsters, uh, treasure. What kind of stuff does Leto Skull wear? Uh, he might have bracers of armor. I forget. Do bracers, bracers of armor, it's like if you're not wearing any. Uh, are bracers of armor good for a monk? Um, bracers of defense. Plus two bonus, you're wearing no armor. So he is wearing those. Um Uh, is there any other cool, uh, what, what could, oh, does he have a, oh man, I'm going to be such a dick. Uh, he has a, um, ion stun, um, 
of absorption. <laughs> oh, come on. Ion Stone, absorption, very rare. When you get a spell, you can cancel a spell, it has 20 levels on it. He probably bought, he just got a fresh one. Um, we'll see how many he needs. Um, Ion Stone of Absorption is a dick move, uh, but it works well. Uh, any other? That's pretty good. Well, could Valentine have something? What would be a cool thing for a Lamia illusionist to have? Um, no way am I giving a cloak of displacement. Um, rings? What's a cool ring? Let's look at rings. Whoops. Animal influence, genie summoning, elemental command, nah, 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 evasion. Um, that's not bad, but I don't know. Feather falling. Um, that's that's probably she probably has a ring of feather falling, right? She uses that as an escape. She always wears that. Uh, any other? Uh, ring of free action, visibility, jumping, mind shielding. Mind shielding is not bad. Mind, sh oh, you know, I bet Lido Skull has one of these. Um, and another orb, right? I think he's got a, I think I have a name for it too. Uh, let's take a look. If I go back to campaign database, Nebron. Go to items. I thought I made a another. Am I in the wrong thing? Um, let's go to the campaign database. So I thought I put another orb in here. So that's lack. Lack is one sentient orb. But I thought I had another in here. There it is, Chris. Um, uh, and Chris is a um, Dalcor orb also that's screwing people up. So I got some, tre wow, a lot of treasure, huh? I got my scratch pad, oops. Um, so really, I just need some secrets. So what are some secrets? Okay, well, we got it, right, Lido? I probably don't need to link it except for the first time. Uh, has a sentient uh, Lido Skull has a sentient uh, Dalcor um, magic orb of his own. Uh, there are seven orbs. Each of them are thousands. I think they're right, hundreds of thousands. There are seven orbs of the dreaming dark in the world. Each of them are are, te are tens to hundreds of thousands of years old, and they are poisonous to mortal minds. Um, uh, so that's a good one. What other secrets? So um, uh, Lido doesn't know where the location of glass, of making in the glass plateau, doesn't know we're making in the glass, but oh gods. We're making a glass, but is located. Plans to. Um, what's the name of the city? Oh gods. One problem is like, if you don't remember the name of something, you're really host. So let's go to locations. Um, he plans to find it in Eston. Uh, 
Um, what else? Uh, any other secrets and clues that they could learn here? Uh, Lido uh, brought um, Valentine. Lido brought Valentine Flame Touch back from Zendrek uh, from her Accursed Ruins. Uh, she was one of three Sphinxes. I don't know how to spell Sphinxes. She was one of three Sphinxes and murdered her sister. Uh, murdered her sister and became cursed for it. Right. Her other sister, her remaining sister, is Flame Touch, Flame, Flame Wind, of Morgrave. Um. Uh, what else do we have? Can I get four more secrets out of my rusty head? That would be cool. What else do they learn? So what's Lido doing? Uh, Lido has been playing. For he's been playing all sides for years. He's to the das to drum and dask. Uh, the orum. Um, and the Emerald Claw. He'll use whoever he needs to to get what he wants. Lido believes... Um, I can't spell the word believes. Lido believes he can be one of the most powerful beings in Corvair if he holds the weapon of mourning in his hand. That's what he's really after. He can call his own shots if he has that weapon in his hand. Um, Lido's Lido's Eberron crystal uh, isn't the only crystal of that size. The Droam have excavated one from Kyber. Oh, wow. Hey. Hey, Keith. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Always happy to see anything related to Framewind. Yeah, I'm making up some Flamewind stuff. Pardon me while I butcher your world. <laughs> uh, boy, I wish you were here an hour earlier. I just did a whole review of your book, but it looks very cool. Uh, so thank you for coming. I don't know if I, if I sit you here, is there any questions? So a bunch of the people in the chat here saw the first part. So they, they might have questions for you. Um, but since you're here, are there any questions I've got? You notice I like stood up in my chair as soon as you show up. It got very, things got very formal. Um, is that your hat in the picture of the Warforged choosing their um, choosing their clothing? Because uh, that piece of art is awesome. Oh, I gotta find the piece of art now. I don't know why I'm asking. I'm sure it's your hat. Right there, kind of looks like your hat. Awesome. Um, oh, let me finish my one more secret. I can't go away with only nine secrets. One more secret about Lita Skull. Uh, what is he doing? He's trying to get the weapon of mourning. Uh, there's another crystal. Uh, Lido has agents in, uh, what was the name of it? Esten, who have been seeking the location of the glass plateau. There, all right. 
so that is uh, everything. I am I am ready. I am ready to run a airship game. Um, yes, yeah, so I think one of the keys uh, about running this next session is that it's a situation, right? The their um, Lido Skull is on his airship, the night sky. He is flying out of Sharn. He's got his huge Eberron crystal, and he's got the Tome of Colsier, and he uh, is going to go try to find um, the Glass Plateau. And the characters have to stop him. Maybe he might die today, right? I don't know. That's how these work out. Like they could, they could figure it out and crash a ship. He, he can fly and go invisibility. That's how he's fine. Um, so he's a he's a pretty good survivor. It's gonna be hard to get rid of him, but they could get him today. Like players are crafty, um, and uh, so that's a possibility. And uh, he could also just get away, and that's a possibility. So I don't know what's gonna happen. All I know is what the situation is, and I know that boy Lido's got a lot of dudes, right? He it's got him. He's got Valentine. He's got uh, you know eighteen jackal wares. He's got fake man, you know illusionary manticores or not manticores uh, chimeras. He's got uh, a bunch of Tarkinon assassins with him. That's going to be pretty tough, right? And all he needs to do is get away. Like, he wants to get away with the ship, um, but they might acquire... This is the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Nazis are taking the Ark away on a um, big uh, truck, and Indy has to go stop the truck and get the Ark. That's what's going on here. And I don't know how it's going to play out. It could, it could play out many different ways. He could capture him for all I know. And that's kind of the fun of a situation like this is I don't know where it's going to go and I don't know what's going to happen next. And that's, that's my favorite kind of, that's my favorite kind of D&D game to run. So I'm really excited for that. Um, Keith says, like that you got a player tied to Lady Amaro at a campaign where the Paladin uh, of the Blood of Vol had been trained by Omaro was trying to bring down uh, Caius. Yeah. So yeah, it's been a lot of fun. And, and um, uh, yeah, the brother. So it's two Warforged, uh, one of which was uh, left in Breland, left left uh, you know and the other one what became a member of the emerald claw in karnath during the war so they were split at birth kind of split during creation the two earliest warforged and um just found out about or, or, so crash knew about shift but not the other way around so that's fun um i believe illusionary manticore was the first album by the band 18 jackalwares yeah they're all heavy metal jackalwares yeah so fun stuff um yeah man any other boy what do i want to what do i want to say i love uh, there's something you can yeah you, you know uh, there's so much to love in the book so i'm really excited about it it's very cool uh i think i gotta ask everybody's question because everybody's gonna ask do we know i know it's coming out like this month do we have any other closer idea when it might be coming out because everybody wants it really badly that's probably the main thing because it's really really great oh and the artwork is so awesome Man, I don't know. On the spot, I don't have any questions. Um, yeah, we love the planes, and I want to dig more into the planes. Uh, that, that's a section of the book I haven't really, I, I mean, I haven't really dived deep into any main part. I started reading up on the whole drawm side. I love the drawm side, so it was very cool. Well, I hate to end uh, as the creator of Eberron shows up in the chat channel, but uh, I'm afraid I need to because I do have a D&D game to run. So I want to thank everybody for coming today. Uh, Keith, thank you so much for giving me a preview copy of the book. Um, it's, it's really, really cool. I can't wait. I hope that uh, people have a chance to see it again. Uh, for those of you in Twitch, if you have did not make the beginning of the show, the YouTube video for this will be up hopefully by noon. So uh, you can go subscribe to my YouTube channel and you'll get an alert. Uh, and you will see it. So uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, appreciate it. And I will see all of you guys next week. So have a great week and uh, get out there and play a little Eberron.